Hey, how's it going Entity? We're just taking a look at Persistent Player Statistics. This is something new that they just came out with in Unreal Editor for Fortnite for version 2.9.0. And there's a lot to this. There's a lot to unpack. And this is fairly sophisticated, I think. But it also opens up a lot of opportunities. So what I did is I kind of went through it and compiled it together and made it a quest counter versus a highest score counter. And I think it's cool because it is kind of neat to have the data save. Here I am in just a blank template project and I have a trigger device and a billboard. And all the rest of this is in code. Now, if you look at that example, I think they call it the player stats tutorial or something like that and they walk you through it. But this one is weird because if you press this button, it increments the score, and it, once you go over 10, if you press this button, it'll count a win as one and reset this to zero. But then if you press this button again, it starts counting losses because your score, once it's set to zero, Every time you press that send, you're losing. <laughs> you could also set it up to be a quest counter, which is kind of cool. And in this example, what they have you do is they have you set up three separate classes, which it's really hard to study it because it's spread out over three classes plus a verse device. So what I've done is I've put it all into one. So that's what we're going to be looking at right now. So rather than having a button, I have a trigger. So what this looks like is if I go into the code, and I go start game. And this is kind of cool because when I go over the trigger, you'll see it's counting my quest from before. So it shows quest five, quest six, see that? Quest completed seven, eight, nine. And if I end the game and I go start the game, and I come back here, see it picks up again where I left off, 10, 11, 12. So it's very, very cool. So you, now you can save with verse devices and honestly it might be more simple in a way, but eventually this might be the way to go in the code. So let's just take a look at code here real quick. One of the things they rely heavily on in this code is what they call constructor functions. And one of the kind of the key concepts is that verse persistence does not allow classes containing variable fields to be persistible. Data is therefore updated with re a reconstructed copy of the whole class. When the class is reconstructed, you do not have to recopy all the fields, just the updated ones. The way I'm trying to think of it is like a spreadsheet. You know, it's like if you have an Excel spreadsheet and you change one cell on there, like you let's say you delete it then you might have to re-alphabetize the list. You may have to recalculate the list and then save it again. That's kind of what this is like. It's like if you make an update, you got to change the whole class again. And that's what the reconstructors are for. So here, the other thing I guess to notice is that this is the, one of the, the constructors in here, right? So it's called down here make updated player stat right with the updated score so that's why i'm saying every time there's an update every time the person steps on the trigger it's reconstructing the whole table and the map and everything all over again so it's like you have a fresh copy every time there's a single update so one thing you might find helpful if you're going through that exercise online is just putting all the classes into one class so like i said there's three classes in there there's a player stats table, and there's a player stats map, and here's a constructor that makes the stats table here. And then there's a player stat, and then there's another constructor function to make another player stats. And then there's a stat type. And here, if you read the code, instead of using an enumeration, they've decided to use this module instead. So they're using a module, they're using a module instead of an enum because it can be added to later. So right now I just have a single score in here. You could add other variables into module. And then here's our player stats manager here. 
and it has these functions in it here to initialize the players and all that. So that's the whole code here. I'll just leave it on the screen for a second if you want to try to follow it. But basically all I did was I combined those three classes into one. And then what we did is we created our actually our verse device here and it's just called player stats example and we've got an at editable for the trigger and the stats billboard and here's our player stats manager here and our stats message that I've just changed to be the number of quests completed. Instead of using a button I use a trigger. So here we have to put in the option of the agent type here. And there was one thing on here that I thought was really interesting. So you'll see here, oh, there was a couple things I noticed in the code. Like one thing they did is I noticed they were using if then statements a lot. And I noticed that makes the code very easy to read. Because a lot of times they would be putting an if statement in a parentheses and then having like three statements in there. And it's kind of hard to read that. One thing that stood out to me was this because this is a an option of the agent type and to get that value out of there we have to unpack it and use the query and assign it to valid agent right and then put valid agent in here and valid agent in here and this way I can use the trigger device instead of a button device but what's interesting what I found really interesting was down here where we go to record the player stat and this is called who calls this? I think this is called from over here. Let's see, record, see where it's called from over here? So every time the agent steps on the trigger, right, it checks to see that it's a valid agent, makes it sure if there's data already in there, and then we get our current score, right? But then here, this happens, then we call with all this data here, right? with the current score and the stat type and the valid agent, we call this record player stat method with these three parameters. And notice that this looks like an option, right? Of an integer type, because this is an integer here. The current score is an integer. But if we come over here, we'll see it again here. But you'll notice that nowhere down here is it unpacked. The option is never unpacked. So I take that out and I get an error. And it's this error. I wrote it up here. Question mark score needs a prefixed question mark indicating it matches with a named argument when specifying a value other than the default. So this seems to be a special use case but I couldn't find where this was explained in the documentation. I do see this around from time to time. I just found that interesting. But anyway, this is the code again for the device. And this is the code for the three classes combined into one. And like I said, I simplified it so that it doesn't have so much in it. And I like the idea of merging them all into one. So anyway, that's all I had for today. Just a quick update on this. So take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.